Hi, I'm Jonathan Oxer, and this is Superhouse. Now what you can see up behind me is the end result of having the old veranda ripped down, new one built, fascia removed, and what the old builder did was leave our telephone and foxtel cable roped up to the post, which is not that good. So I need to get that fixed up, and um, one of the things I want to do is get it put underground. That introduces a little problem because I need to get it past the footpath. Let's have a look at what the problem is. Right now the cable comes in overhead and then disappears through under the house. But what I've started doing is digging a trench that ends down here at the baseboard. And so I'm going to bring conduit in under the front lawn, runs all the way across the lawn to the front fence, which is all fine and well, except that how do we get past the footpath? Just on the other side of this footpath, there is a Telstra pit. That is my objective. I need to get the conduit onto the right end of that, con uh, of that pit. I've got a Telstra technician who has agreed to hook it all up for me, so it'll all be done officially. But to save him some effort, I'm going to do all the digging first. So the challenge for today is getting the conduit under the footpath. First though, I'm going to show you a few of the tools and supplies that you'll use, whether you're trying to get somewhere like under a footpath or just doing normal um, conduit type work. It could be outside, it could be inside. These are a lot of tools that you'll use all the time, so if you're going to get into home automation, you'd better be familiar with this. Conduit comes in different sizes, colours and materials. The most common conduit you'll see is PVC and it's either white or orange. Now the colours do actually matter. The Australian standards state that orange is used for mains level wiring and it should not be used for anything else. So the idea is that if you are digging, you come across conduit, by looking at the colour you should be able to tell what's inside it. And there is no specific standard that I'm aware of for data cabling, but there is a convention. Um, the standard says that you must not put data cabling inside a colour that's prescribed for another use. So basically data cabling is undefined, and the result is that white is used pretty much universally. So this is what you'll find everywhere. Um, it comes in different sizes, typically you'll use about 20 or 25 mil. Um, this is, how big is that? That's 50 mil, so that's huge. Um, you wouldn't normally come across that. And either in um, solid or in flexible. So this is flexible conduit. Now flexible conduit is not something you'd want to bury in the ground necessarily because it doesn't provide much mechanical protection, but it can be useful for more indoor sort of situations where you need to protect it to some extent, um, cover cable up and have it run through some unusual space or shape that you have trouble getting solid conduit through. There are also conduit fittings. So in this particular case we've got some bends and a couple of joiners. These are just double sided. You shove a bit of conduit in each side, glue it all in and it connects it together. Now one thing to be careful of with bends is not to go too sharp. In fact you should go for the most gentle bend you can. You can get 90 degree right angles but if you try to get a cable through that that's going to be a total pain in the ass. So, um, the terminology that's used is normally uh, the very large diameter curves are called, referred to as sweeps um, and there's also a little stopper um, which we'll use for a special purpose in a moment. Now to attach all the conduit together you use some glue like this, it's a PVC solvent cement, it's got methyl ethyl ketone in it which basically acts as a solvent for the um, PVC that these are made out of, so it's a nasty gunky stuff. You um, coat that around on the surfaces, shove the, uh, the conduit together and after a little while it's, um, it's all melted together and glued. Um, it doesn't reach full mechanical strength for about 24 hours but you can put this stuff on, shove it together, put it in the ground and just leave it. It'll set just fine. Another really handy thing to have is this drawstring. This is, um, it's very strong. This is actually like official Telstra stuff. What they do is put this through the conduit and leave it in place and then later if you want to drag more cables through you can uh, tie off the cable or tape it to one end of this and then pull it from the other and you can drag the cable through. A lot easier to pull something through a pipe than to push it through that's for sure. So if you can get hold of some of this stuff and leave it in your conduit when it's done um, future proofs it so you can get all the cables through much more easily. Now if you can't find any of this this is a really good substitute. 
This is a Ricky's line. Um, it's a very strong sort of nylon line. It's only a couple of dollars for a big roll from Bunnings or wherever. Um, it's not very rigid, so it's harder to get through the conduit in the first place. Um, but if, once you get it through, leave that in, um, just cut it off and tie off the end so that it stays there. And then later you can use this for dragging more wire back through. Something that's really handy to have around if you can get it is this stuff. It's called Yellow Tongue. It's a um, plastic strip that comes out of the edge of flooring, like floor sheeting. And um, normally there's a slot in one side of the sheet and there's this little bit of plastic sticking out the other. And the sheets are jammed together. So um, often you'll end up being able to rip this stuff out of the edge of the sheet, like if there's an off-cart or something at a building site. And it's very handy keeping a length of this around um, because what you can do is basically use this to push cable through the conduit. You can um, attach the wire, like put the wire on the side of it, use some electrical tape, wrap it around, push this in, and that way you'll, uh, you'll get it through. Big labor saving. And the final thing, of course, is how do you cut the conduit? Well, the obvious way is with a hacksaw. Um, you just need to be a little bit careful, um, use light strokes, and otherwise it tends to go off track a little bit and um, you'll need to clean it up afterwards because there'll be burrs. But um, what the professionals use is a big pair of shears, which is basically like a ratcheting pair of scissors that are strong enough to cut straight through the conduit. I don't have them, so I just resort to the good old fashioned hacksaw. Right, so now that I've got this far, the question is, how do we get under the footpath through to the other side where the Telstra pit is so the linesman can come in and do his stuff? Well, there are three pretty common ways to do um, to do this. I mean, we don't want to lift the actual footpath, we've got to go under it somehow. can't just dig under it with a shovel. Now, um, the first way is called horizontal boring. That is basically like a, a big drill bit, like a flat spade bit, on the end of a long flexible shaft. Usually what you do is you have a machine mounted over the trench, a long rod that goes through, and the machine itself twists the, uh, the bit and it also forces it through horizontally, so basically just digging through the dirt. The second is um, using, it's a bit like core sampling. What you can do if you've got a bit of conduit that you're going to put in place is put it down in the trench up against the bit that you want to get under, tap the end with a hammer, preferably with a bit of wood or something to protect it, and you'll get um, dirt shoved into the end. So you pull it back out, use a rod or something, tap the dirt out, put it back in and do it again. So it's like taking repeated core samples and over a period of time you end up working your way all the way through and you can shove your conduit in. The third, which is what I'm going to give, uh, give a go, is called water boring. And that is where um, you put the conduit in place and you put water down it um, with the end of the conduit blocked up, just with a couple of little holes in it so that the water comes out with a bit of pressure. And basically you wriggle it and push it through underneath and the water comes out the end, runs back down around the conduit and it bores its way through. So I'm going to show you how I've set the conduit up to do that. Now this is probably a bit of overkill. Um, this would probably work reasonably well just with an open-ended bit of conduit. But what I did was I got one of the plugs and glued it in place yesterday. So it's had a day to dry, the glue is all really hard, and pushed it down inside the end of the pipe. Then I used a hacksaw and just cut some notches into it. And the idea is that the end of the pipe now is going to be a bit like an, an abrasive bit, so I'll be able to push it in and twist it and water will be coming out here and that will then flush away um, all of the residue and um, the dirt should be taken back down the hole. So next thing I've got to do is attach the hose to the other end of the conduit. Well, amazingly, it's only taken a couple of minutes. This is a tape mark just here that shows the point at which it will have reached the far end. So this is my indicator as to progress. And it's already up to here. I've only got about 30 centimeters to go. Time to go and check the other end. And then we 
we have it. Tell you what, that was actually easier than I expected. Once you get the water flowing out through the tube, it's just like, you know, hot knife through butter. The dirt just kind of dissolves in front of it as you keep agitating it and it works its way through. So I'm total only a few minutes and we've dug about uh, 1.8 metres and gone under a concrete footpath. See, and automation isn't all glamour. Sometimes you just got to get dirty. So now that we've got a hole ready to go, next thing is I've got to put uh, this cord inside the conduit to make it really easy to pull the cable through later. And I can do that easily enough with this bit of yellow tongue. So all I've got to do is tape the, um, the drawstring around the end of this, shove the yellow tongue through the conduit, and I'll be set. And I'll just untie it from the, untape it from the other end and pull the yellow tongue back out. Conduit set up, I've got the drawstring through it, taped at this end so it won't fall out. I can feed it through the hole and get it in next to the Telstra pit. There we go, it's all the way through. It's best to get the joint sealed if you can, and the way to do that is with this MEK solvent. This one's a bit old and gluggy, but should still do the job. Make sure the pipe is clean. Um, there is actually a pre-cleaner stuff that you can get as well, but I'm not going to bother. It's not that important for this sort of application. Um, there's no liquid or pressure or anything under this, so um, this is really just to hold the pipes together. Smear it around the outside. If you've got a drawstring, like I have, make sure you don't get it on the drawstring itself. So I've looped the end of the drawstring back around so I can pull it, and um, that keeps it tight and stops it from flopping around and getting into the adhesive. And just wiggle it closed. Easy as that. It'll take some hours to dry, but that doesn't matter. You can chuck it in the ground and put dirt on it straight away. It's ready to go. Now it's coming through onto the house. I just need to fix this with a saddle clip and it'll be all secure. And then it's time to backfill from the outside. Perfect, that's not going anywhere. And now we've got the drawstring in place. This goes all the way through to the end, other end of the conduit where it comes out at the Telstra pit. So now when the Telstra techs come to run the cable through, they can just attach it, pull the string, out it comes, easy as pie. And now we're all ready to backfill the trench. The job is almost done. Well, it is done if you can get your trusty offsider to do all the digging for you. I think I'm gonna go off and have a nice cold drink. See ya.